Okay, it's Easter Sunday. I tried shooting this video last night and I was too tired to do it. So we're going to give this a, a second try. <laughs> uh, this video is on servo pulses for controlling, uh, on generating servo pulses for controlling servos and electronic speed controls. Um, if you've ever tried to do this before or if you ever scoped it up, you would know that the actual pulse that's being sent between the uh, controller board you have and the device looks like this, okay? This is what we call a PWM signal. And it has a period, a full end-to-end uh, -end period of 20 uh, milliseconds. And this little guy in here is the actual control pulse. And for stuff like this, uh, for stuff like the ESCs, it ranges from about 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds. Okay, and so lately I've been having a heck of a time generating these pulses for different projects. Um, you can do it with an Arduino Uno, um, which has a built-in 16-bit timer, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. But I wanted something a little bit more uh, compact and that I could like embed into a device. So we're actually today going. I'm going to show you the solution I have, which uses an AT Tiny, an AVR AT Tiny 85 chip. Um, and we utilize the 8-bit timer on this uh, AT Tiny to uh, generate those pulses. Okay, so what are timers? Well, I don't want to get too, too into it. Um, we could do maybe a separate video on that because today I just want to show you kind of the thing that I made. Um, but a timer is just a register. Okay, it's just a register that's incremented once every clock cycle or some uh, multiple of clock cycles. And that comes about when you use what's called a prescale factor. So, for example, if I have a prescale factor of two, then it is incremented once every two clock cycles. So if I have eight megahertz clock and I have a prescale factor of two, that means my timer is incremented at four megahertz. I just want to briefly mention there are a few different types of modes that you can put your timer into. Uh, CTC, which is clear to the timer on compare, or PWM, those are basically uh, you can think of them as set and forget uh, modes where you set certain interrupts and uh, registers to do different things. Today we're going to talk about using the timer in the normal mode, which doesn't have really, uh, it, it, it still uses some interrupts, but it's a little bit less um, done up in the hardware and it's kind of more on the front end of the code. It's a little bit slower, but it actually works out. Again, what's the mission statement? It's We want to get a 20 millisecond period approximately and then every 20 milliseconds, we want to send a one millisecond pulse that we can vary between 1,000 and 2,000, you know, very finely vary um, to send our control signal across. What we have to do is we have to scale this, we have to span this 20 milliseconds and also the one millisecond with an 8-bit timer. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, if, you, if you can imagine the, uh, a graph of the value of the timer versus time, this is what it would look like. Up linearly cleared, up linearly cleared, up linearly cleared, and as it turns out, we do this ten times, um, which I'll talk about in a second. And then once that, once we're done doing those, uh, what are called overflows, then this value is going to increase until we have a we have a compare value that's mapped to the width that we want of this peak, and when the timer reaches that compare value, it shoots back. It's uh, it's cleared. And we can uh, fire off a uh, we can fire off this pin to go back off again. Okay, so let's let's talk about this more concretely, uh, in numerically rather. We have an eight megahertz timer on the AT Tiny, and so that corresponds to if we do one divided by eight times ten to the six, we get something you know sub microsecond. So then we're going to multiply that by sixty four, a prescale factor of sixty four to get us to 8 microseconds. So that corresponds to 8 microsecond increments for when the timer is incremented, okay? So what's a full period of our, what's a full period of our 8-bit timer then? It's 8 times 255, which is approximately 2 milliseconds, right? So that means that each one of these overflows is 2 milliseconds, approximately. And so then we need 10 of those guys we need 10 overflows to uh, get us the 20 millisecond period we want. 
Uh, good timing of this is enabled by the use of an ISR, or interrupt service routine. And what that is, is when the, we can attach an interrupt to the overflowing, to the actual physical overflowing of the timer. So when it overflows, an interrupt is triggered. And we just want to do something very not time intensive in that uh, function that's called. And so in this case, we're just incrementing doing plus plus to a counter. And then we're just going to mon monitor that uh, counter in the code to say, OK, we've reached 10. Uh, the overflow has reached 10. And so uh, you know, do the last little step of the code, which is to make this little pulse happen. OK, and so that's how we can get these overflows to happen in quick succession, um, and then at the end, fire off the, uh, the pulse, the servo pulse that we need. And then again, from 0 to 255, if you multiply by 8 microseconds, that's 0 to 240 microseconds we have to play with the, the value of this pulse width here. So um, that's pretty good. 8 microsecond steps is, a, I think, about what the commercial guys do. Maybe it's, it's probably less, probably more than 5 microseconds. But um, for proof of concept for now, at least, it works pretty well. So let's go ahead over to the scope, and I'll show you what, we, what I mean. Here we have the Arduino Uno that we're using to program the ATtiny. As you can see, there's no USB port on that guy. Um, so you can yeah configure the Arduino as a uh, ISP, an in-system programmer, or you can use one of these little pre-made, pre-packaged ones. Um, and there's a link in the description and on the GitHub to show you how to do that. Um, but for now, we're just going to use it for power. Um, as you can see. We're going to use the Arduino as 5 volts for power. As you can see, the AT Tiny uh, 85 is hooked up to, right now, a Hall Effect sensor, uh, this little guy right here. And so I have a little magnet that I will uh, basically jiggle the fuel around there. And that'll be an analog input into, I guess, pin 4, that is. Um, and based on the input signal, you know, this is just a proof of concept. Based on the input signal, we will vary the output on uh, pin 0, which is sending the PWM pulse uh, signal. So that'll vary, you know, between like a thousand and two thousand microseconds. Um, that'll vary the value as we vary the B field. So let's try to plug her in here. All right, and as you can see, uh, if I zoom in here, <laughs> in time it, it is, we have a uh, output signal of one millisecond, one point oh four five milliseconds. Uh, that's so the PWM output is on the yellow trace, and the blue trace is the uh, Hall effect sensor. This is just the uh, Allegro's whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll put the part in the description. Um, just a basic Hall effect sensor. So you can see as I move the magnet towards the Hall effect, the blue line, the Hall effect reading threshold increases. That's read into the AT8 tiny and then it adjusts the servo pulse correspondingly. And then you can see also outwards, if I zoom out here, the one thing I haven't fixed in this code, as you can maybe tell if you look closely, is, uh, so yeah, again, this is the two millisecond pulse width here, or uh, period, rather. Um, as you can maybe tell, the actual, <laughs> the total period will change uh, as the value of the pulse change, the pulse width changes. And that's because I have a fixed 10, remember there's 10 overflows of the timer, and then whatever, there's, you know, another, However long that this pulse is attached onto that, onto that, um, which can be anywhere, as I said, from zero to two milliseconds. Um, so the total period could be anywhere from 22 milliseconds to, or two, you know, 20 milliseconds to 22 milliseconds um, period. So I have to adjust for that in the code still, but um, it actually works uh, without it. This electronics are pretty forgiving, and I'll show you that here in a second as well. Okay, here we are with a uh, servo, or I'm uh, sorry, a uh, uh, brushless DC motor in a uh, little housing here for an airplane, and a 20 amp Afro Mini ESC <laughs> with battery elimination circuit, and uh, so I've got that hooked in just to the servo out signal. So we're going to give this a try. Let's see if we can. Plugged in and enabled. And sure enough. Yep, 
Not too bad, huh? So yeah, this was just a little, you know, kind of proof of concept uh, to generate PWM signals. I've really been having trouble doing it, uh, especially on the Raspberry Pi, which has a bunch of other processes running, and uh, you really need to make sure you're careful about your interrupts because it's not trivial to generate a signal this steady. Uh, I don't know if you saw when I put it up on the scope, but it, I'm pretty happy with how steady uh, the pulse with this. It's really, really pretty good. So this project was uh, kind of inspired by a, uh, a friend who's working on a little project um, who he needs to uh, have this signal generated from a small device and have like a little actuator, um, have someone either moving a pot or uh, a little control to change the throttle. Um, his his uh, YouTube name is PD White. I'll have a link in the description. Um, he's got he does some awesome stuff with drones and uh, uh, electronic paragliders. Or I think it's P personal, yeah, powered paragliders. Um, so go ahead and check him out. But yeah, guys, uh, hopefully uh, take a look at the GitHub uh, repository. I know this wasn't a very good in-depth description of timers, but I think uh, you at least got to see this thing work and. Uh, you might even be able to get it to work on your own setup. So that's kind of the goal here is to just show you what I did and maybe you can do the same. So, and you hopefully let me know if we can improve it. So yeah, until then, I'll see you later.